Hi everyone, my name is April, and this is Thrifted Transformations, the show where I go thrifting for old clothing and transform them into something new. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this episode, I thrifted this long pleated dress and was really inspired by the black and white floral prints on it. Before we get started, I just wanted to remind you, if you're new to this channel, I make DIY fashion and thrifted transformation videos every week. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button because we are so close to hitting 1 million subscribers. The first thing I'm doing is seam ripping the sides apart and then ironing the pleats out. So I just wanted to show you guys what it looks like now after I ironed all the pleats out. You can now see how beautiful this fabric flows and the beautiful print on it. But watch what happens when I move this neckline down to my waist and turn it to the side. It now looks like a high-low skirt. This is what it looks like in the back. It still has this part right here. So I'm thinking about sewing a line straight down from here to take away this part. So it's either leaving it as a high-low skirt gown or cutting it here and turning it into a circle skirt. If I turn it into a circle skirt, I'll have the bottom half to use as the rest of the dress. But I don't know, I think I kind of like the idea of having it as a gown with a tail train at the end dragging. Here I'm cutting that diagonal line from the waist to the bottom of the dress to get rid of that excess fabric. Next, I square the corner and blend it into the original neckline. Since it's going to be a more formal look, I bought some lining fabric for the skirt and cut out the same shape as the dress. To finish off the raw edges and stabilize the hem, I'll be sewing some horsehair braid along the bottom. First, I closed up the back seam of both skirts just a few inches and then faced the two layers right sides together. Next, I stitched the two skirts together along the hem and then sew the horsehair braid at a quarter inch on the lining side. Make sure you don't stretch the horsehair braid as you sew because it will distort the fabric. Next, I top stitched the printed side of the dress to the horsehair braid, then folded the lining and horsehair braid underneath so it creates a really clean edge. To make sure the horsehair braid stays in place, hand sew it to the dress using a blind stitch. For the waistband of the skirt, I'm using some additional black fabric and cut out a long strip that is 3.5 inches wide. I put some interfacing on half of the strip and then press my seam allowance on both sides. Next, sew the interface side of the waistband onto the outside skirt only. Now it's time to sew the invisible zipper to the outside skirt. To attach the lining skirt to the zipper, you'll have to hand sew it down and then close up the rest of the skirt as well. Lastly, fold the waistband over to the inside and sew it down using the stitch in a ditch method. As you can see, I'm sewing on the right side of the skirt into the seam line. Make sure your lining seam allowance is long enough underneath so that it catches it as you sew. Since I had some scraps left from trimming the dress earlier, I'm designing a crisscross bodice to go along with it. If you want to design your own, just grab some colorful tape and play around with the shape you want. 
Then I just make sure my fabric is on grain, pin it so it lays flat against my dress form, and mark along the taped lines. Once my pattern pieces are finalized, I cut one side out of the printed fabric and the other side out of the black fabric so it will be a color blocked look. Add some interfacing onto each front piece and then sew them together along the princess seam. Do the same thing to the lining fabric as well. Next, I'm using some feather light boning and removing the plastic boning from the case. Then sew the case along the princess seam of the lining bodice. Shorten the boning so it doesn't extend into the seam allowance and then slide it back into the casing. After both lining pieces have boning installed, face it right sides together with the outside layers and sew along the top and bottom. Carefully turn each piece inside out and press all the edges so it's nice and crisp. To make the back side of the bodice, I first pinned together the front bodice in place and measured the sides. Then I marked the same side seam measurement on my dress form and draped the back side. Next, sandwich the front bodice between the back side pieces and sew all three side seams together. I marked my seam allowance so I know where the edges of the front bodice should be. After all three layers have been sewn together, it should look clean from the outside and inside. To close the back, I'm sewing in an invisible zipper upside down. You can use this method or you can sew hook and eyes or even a grommet lace up. I don't recommend sewing an upside down zipper if you don't like struggling to put on clothes. To sew the invisible zipper in, I sandwiched it in between the lining and outside bodice and it's kind of tricky because there's not a lot of room to work with so I suggest pinning it first and making sure it's correct before sewing it down. After sewing the zipper, I turned it to the side and sewed the top as well. Pull everything right sides out and repeat the same thing to the other side. I actually broke my zipper so I bought a new one and re-sewed everything. It was probably the universe's way of telling me to use a matching black zipper instead of a gray one. Next, unzip the zipper and sew a zigzag stitch over each side to create a new zipper stop. Lastly, trim the leftover zipper away, took all the raw edges inside the bodice, and hand sew the opening close with a slip stitch. Here is the final transformation. I was able to wear strapless for this shoot with the help of double-sided tape, but for sure this top is going to need some straps. I love that it's a two-piece because I can wear both pieces separately. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Thrifted Transformations. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so we can hit 1 million subscribers by the end of the year. See you guys next time. Bye!